pretty difficult to tell things apart. Okay, so k is slice. What's the definition? k is slice if k bounds a smooth disk d in the four ball. There's slice. K is ribbon if k bounds d in b4. I'll just keep using d for a disk. And you said this is okay, right, Ken? See, I think so we make some additional conditions. So I require that the radial Morse function on D4 has no maxima restricted to D. So those of you who like to think more three-dimensionally, this may not necessarily agree with your definition of ribbon, but I can draw a picture that Sort of gets gets at what's happening. Let's see if I can get there. This uh, around here. How about this? This will be a kind of knot if I didn't know. No, it's not. There we go. And I'll connect stuff like that. There we go. There, there is the more classically defined ribbon knot. Is it it's an immersed disk in free space with only ribbon intersections. And now what I can do is, well, there's different ways to do this, but I like to attach bands. So I imagine attaching two bands to my knot and resolving those bands is going to give me a three-component hung link. And so I could build this surface in B4. Abstractly, I start with the knot K. I have a saddle point for each of my bands. The bands are kind of like such giving me saddles, and when I resolve the, the bands, I get this three-component unlink. Three-component unlink can be capped off with disks. So there's my ribbon disk, and with respect to the radial Morse function, I have two saddles and three minima, but no maxima. And you can, you can play this in reverse, too. Start with something like this, and you can draw a picture like that with some ribbon intersections. And, and like Dave said, this is not a circle value Morse function yet, but it is. There'll be lots of different sorts of Morse functions in this talk. All right, uh, I, I, I want to do something technical already because we need this piece. This is an important detail for the talk. Right, so I have a disk. Let's take a slice disk. Slice disk, D for K. And the question is, what is the boundary of the exterior of the slice disk? I think we are, we're maybe more three-dimensional than four-dimensional in nature. So this is a good exercise for us to be on the same page here. Anyone know the answer? Excellent. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's zero frame surgery. So you know that one thing as a, you know, I'm a three-manifold topologist at heart. And so I like to draw pictures in dimension three and extrapolate to dimension four. So let's imagine I'm drilling an arc. Uh, let's call that arc alpha out of a handle body. In this case, the boundary of H minus the neighborhood of A is a genus three surface. So I have like a, I'm carving out a handle and I'm removing two disks from the surface and attaching an annulus. And I go from genus two to genus three. Okay, so what happens with my disk here? So let's schematically now, there's S3. This is a neighborhood of my disk. And what I'm trying to understand is this three manifold. Well, it's got, I can't really draw it in the right way in this dimension, but I'm removing a neighborhood of the disk, and the boundary now is some other three manifold. And I would like to know what it is. OK, so I note that if I just focus my attention on the neighborhood of D, well, the neighborhood of D is, is diffeomorphic to a product D2 cross D2. And the boundary of that is going to be, well, this is a four ball, so its boundary is an S3. But because I have this product structure, 
it's naturally broken into two pieces, a D2 cross S1 and an S1 cross D2. And like, like the analogy here, where I'm removing two disks, a D2 cross an S0, and gluing in an annulus, which is a D1 cross an S1, right? Yeah. I will remove a D2 cross S1 and glue in an S1 cross D2, which is better known as, as Dane surgery. And I'm doing Dane surgery along the boundary of that knot. And so the answer, I'll leave a little blank, that, that is the justification that the answer is Dane surgery on K. And, uh, you know, we know that we need to specify a surgery slope to understand which Dane surgery it is. But if I take my disc, here we go, D, and I bump it a little bit in this neighborhood, I can see that parallel copies will bound disjoint discs in this D2 cross D2. And so the linking numbers of the boundaries are zero. So this is a zero slope. And so we will denote this manifold S30. All right. So the boundary of the complement of a slice disk is the three manifold obtained by zero slope. Okay. We good so far? Questions? All right. What's next? Ah, good. More three dimensional stuff. I want to talk about how to carve out submanifold and get a Morse function. So let me draw another three-dimensional picture. All right. Let's say I wanted a handle decomposition for the exterior of the trefoil. And I'm going to do this in maybe a slightly non-standard way. I'm going to put a, a knotted arc in a free ball. But uh, hopefully we'll agree that if I cut out a neighborhood of that arc, I will get an exterior of the trefoil. Everybody good? And what happens with my handles? Well, I have a radial Morse function on the three ball. So let's call this arc also alpha. So I have an arc alpha contained in the three ball. I have a radial Morse function on the three ball. I have minima and one maximum. And now as I, as I, you know, drill from the, I go from the bottom up, sometimes this is called the rising water principle, I can extract a handle decomposition for the complement. So B3, the exterior of the trefoil, let's see, S3 minus the neighborhood of the trefoil is going to be the same as the three ball minus the neighborhood of this arc. And this is a handle decomposition. At the bottom, I have a, a zero handle. And then as I pass through the minima, I will attach two three-dimensional one handles. Those correspond to my minima. Then I pass through my single maximum, and I have one three-dimensional two handle. Corresponds to a maximum. And you know, we know that we can build the exterior of the trefoil in such a way. I and mean, this is one argument for this nice fact about three-dimensional invariance. The tunnel number of a knot plus one, so the Hagar genus of the exterior, is bounded above by the bridge number. That is a generalize that argument, and you get a sketch of that inequality. Okay. So by the power of analogy, we can do this, you know, basically exactly the same way in dimension four. So the four-dimensional picture is I take some disk drawn as such in the four ball, and now I get that four ball, B4 minus the neighborhood of my disk, can be built with a zero handle in the bottom. Uh, and then I have, let's see, some number of one handles, some number of two handles, and some number of three handles. These are four-dimensional handles. And now the one handles come from drilling out minima, the two handles come from drilling out saddles, and the three handles come from 
than the nail max. So this is one way to get a four-dimensional handle decomposition of the complement of an embedded surface in general, using a Morse function on the surface. And if you don't, you don't see this right now, that's fine. You don't have to necessarily see it. Maybe you understand the three-dimensional analogy and you take my word for this part. The reason that I'm telling you this is to motivate the definition of handle ribbon. So handle ribbon means it looks like a ribbon knot from the perspective of a handle decomposition. I mean, the, the reason to make such a definition is that having very little understanding of the slice ribbon conjecture, we may want to consider classes of knots that perhaps live somewhere in between slice and ribbon, if these things are possibly different. Okay, so K is handle ribbon if all of these involve bounding a disk. So if K bounds a disk D in B4 with the additional restriction that the um, exterior, so B4 minus a neighborhood of D has a handle decomposition. without any free handles. The definition for ribbon was no maxima. There's the argument that if I take such a disk and carve it out, I will get minimum, or I'll get one handles and two handles, but no maxima implies no free handles. So from the level of handle decompositions, this disk looks like it could have been obtained from a ribbon disk, but, but who knows? All right, so that is what it means to be handle ribbon. Let me give you one more condition. So let's let's note. So in this case, I get that B4 minus the neighborhood of my disk is a zero handle union sum number of one handles, union sum number of two handles. And then I'm done. Okay. I'm going to flip this upside down, and when I flip it upside down, I'll get a relative handle decomposition. So I have to start with a neighborhood of the boundary to attach my handles on. So when I flip it, I start with the neighborhood of the boundary here across I. We've established the boundary. So that, that will be how my handle decomposition starts. I take a collar neighborhood of the zero surgery on K, and now the two handles turn into two handles, the one handle turns into three handles, and the zero handle turns into a four handle. So I can also build my complement by starting with this, attaching two handles to three handles, and the four dimensional four handle. All right. Just to make sure that I'm following. Yes. Is the reason that handle ribbon doesn't like a priori imply ribbon is that, that the handle structure might not extend over the disk in a nice way? That's exactly right. Yeah. So a motivating example there is think about like torus knots, right? A torus knot has bridge number minimum of P and Q, but it has tunnel number one. Mm -hmm. So you have lots of handle structures on the exterior of torus knots that don't extend in the way that you're saying. Yeah, and so we could imagine that happening. And in fact, it does, it's known to happen in, in dimension four that you have uh, ribbon disks where, like, so for, take the connected sum of a torus knot with its uh, mirror image, right? That'll have a handle decomposition with a low number of handles, but it'll have a um, a presentation with, with like more minima and saddles. It's sort of like the difference here is like the difference between tunnel number and bridge number. No, exactly. Good question. Yeah, Andy. Do Miller and Zempia live in the concept of straw wrangles every one of these? Ah! Maybe that's not. Wonderful point. Yes. So, handle ribbon is in other places in the literature called strongly homotopy ribbon. No, okay. So I think this goes back to Tim Cochran. I mean, I, in the moment, I'm going to tell you what homotopy ribbon means, but it's a group theoretic condition on a disk. And so this is stronger than being homotopy ribbon, and, and so it was, it's been called strongly homotopy ribbon. I, um, I personally think that handle ribbon is better nomenclature because it's a little more descriptive of what's happening. Because this is not homotopy theoretic at all. Yes. But... It, you know, I, I've renamed some, or Maggie and I have renamed something at the risk of 
causing confusion. So yes, is that is that good? I don't know what the best thing to do there is. I like algorithm, so I'm, that's what I'm calling now. All right, so I have this handle decomposition, and what I want to note then is that I can take the exterior of my knot, and that includes into the zero surgery, and now that includes into the exterior of the disc. Okay, and now I hit this all over by one. So the inclusion induces maps on the fundamental group. This map is a surjection because I've, I'm Dane filling, and so Dane filling induces a surjection of fundamental groups. This map also induces a surjection, and the argument is this handle decomposition. This has the same fundamental group as the zero surgery, and now I'm only attaching two handles, three handles, and four handles. And so there's a surjection there. And so this is the motivation for defining what, what Ian mentioned, homotopy ribbon. Um, and so maybe I'll just say K is homotopy ribbon in B4 if K bounds some disk D in B4. And one you know, additional condition is that, um, so pi one of the exterior of the knot surjects onto pi one of the exterior of the disk, as, as we have shown happens here for handle ribbon knots. OK. So those, I am done defining categories potentially in between slice and ribbon, maybe sort of. To summarize, the reason it's called homotopy ribbon is like, is pi one the only homotopy group you have to worry about? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Could there be an obstruction with higher homotopy groups? I, yeah, I, I don't know. Yep. Did you know that you know the answer to the question here? No, I mean, it's, oh. it's related to the whole question of the one intersection. Okay, all right. Okay, so to summarize, we have that ribbon in B4, that is a subset of knots that are handle ribbon in B4, which is a subset of knots that are homotopy ribbon in B4, which is a subset of knots that are slice in B4. Um, potentially, all of these second payments are equal. We have no idea. There's, there's one extra wrinkle. So we can replace B4 with any homotopy four ball, B. So what do I mean in this case by a homotopy four ball? It suffices to say that B is, well, for my purposes, B will be contractible. Um, and uh, what? Boundary of B is the three sphere. That's, that's what I want for my homotopy four ball. So modulo the smooth four-dimensional point gray conjecture, every homotopy four ball is diffeomorphic to standard B4, but we have no idea whether those things exist. The point, and this does come up in the theorems, is that I can also, you know, say handle ribbon in some homotopy four ball B. That that makes sense, right? Just it bounds a disk in that four manifold, homotopy ribbon in some four ball B, and uh, you know, slice in some homotopy four ball B. But maybe I'll remark that being ribbon, that is a B four condition. You, your ribbon in, if you're ribbon in, in B, you're also ribbon in B4. Well, ribbon, ribbon in B doesn't really have a great definition because you have to have the rate of Morse function in order to define it. So this needs radial Morse function. What I meant to say, I guess, is that any reasonable definition of what it would mean to be ribbon in 
an arbitrary b is going to be equivalent to being written in b4. At least in yes. All right. So that is the status of all of those definitions. And now I'm ready to state what I call a wonderful theorem of Gaffs and Gordon. I mean, it is wonderful. So theorem of Gaffs and Gordon. All right, so let A and S3 be fibered. So I start with a fibered knot. We have that K is homotopy ribbon in some B. This is a homotopy four ball, so it could be any arbitrary homotopy four ball. If and only if the vibration of um, the exterior uh, extends over handlebars. And I have to tell you what this means. Like a little squiggly underline there. But why I think this is a wonderful theorem is because, well, it, um, it gives a very nice characterization of being homotopy ribbon with, with this condition, which can actually be checked. So before I tell you what the theorem, what it means, maybe I'll make a remark. There's a there's a really nice quanta article about a recent result last week, which is relevant to this. So as a corollary, this is the theorem of Miyazaki in '94. Uh, among other things, the 2-1 cable of the figure 8 knot is not ribbon. This is, this is how you can obstruct that. In fact, it's, it's not homotopy ribbon in any homotopy for all B. You show that it's monotromy, or it's, its vibration does not extend over handlebars. And so the, the theorem that I was referencing I don't remember the authors though. Let's see. So the the recent theorem that that eliminates this, you know, for many years this was a possible counterexample to slice ribbon because of course if you show it sliced, then it's then it's sliced but not ribbon. So the theorem of Guy, King, Malik, Park, and Stoffrigan. Is that it's also not sliced. So in fact, it is eliminated from being a potential counterexample to slice ribbon, for better or worse. And this, I think, this is sort of what people believe. But in any case, there's a connection to what's happening in the world today. Okay, so what does it mean to extend over handle bodies? Let me set this up. I need to. Well, okay, so first, let's start with the vibration of the exterior. So P will be my vibration. So it's a map from the complement of the knot to S1, where uh, the fibers here, all the no points in S1 by theta, these are sacred surfaces. So this is one, one definition of a fiber knot. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is cap this off. This is a vibration of a manifold with boundary. I want to use this to get a vibration of a manifold which is closed. So cap off each fiber with a disc. If I cap off each of my fibers with a disc, then I'm capping off with an S1's worth of disc. I'm gluing in a solid torus with a Dane filling. And the discs are glued along the longitudinal cypher slope. And so that gives me uh, p hat. The three manifold I get when I do this is exactly zero there, k here, to zero surgery on k. So in this vibration, fibers are uh, capped off cypher surfaces. All right, so that's going from a vibration of the exterior to a vibration of the zero surgery. 
And now I can define this. So we say that P extends over handlebodies. If there exists a uh, compact four manifold X um, such that the boundary is the right thing. So I want the boundary to be the zero surgery on K. And now I want a fibration. So and a fibration. Uh, let's call this capital P. Um, taking X to S1 such that, uh, well, it extends over handlebodies. So I want the fibers to be handlebodies. So fibers are handlebodies. And it should extend in, in the appropriate way. And so, uh, yeah. So if I restrict to the boundary, which is the zero surgery, I expect that to be little p hat. And so this is the definition. It is a little technical if you haven't thought about this before, but it, it is something that is checkable, as I said. You so can for every theta, is the image under capital P like a, a handle body bounded by that? Uh, yes, exactly. Exactly. It's a handle body, and its boundary is a capped off cipher surface. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. yeah, question. Um, should it be? Easy to like look at this definition and then see that like if this definition is satisfied that you're from the ribbon, or is that also like you know my intuition says that the other direction of the theorem seems hard, but are both directions of that theorem hard? Or? Uh, the reverse direction is not so bad. Uh, yeah, let me sketch it. Sure. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah. So, sketch of reverse direction. So, yes, that, that direction is relatively straightforward. It's the forward direction that's, that's really tricky. Um, okay, so I want to build a homotopy four ball, B. So, B is going to be, I take. I mean, this is like a relative handle decomposition. I start with S3 cross I, and I uh, glue in a two, a two handle, a zero frame two handle along K. Um, and then to that, the boundary of this is, is the, the zero surgery. I glue in X. So you check that that is a, is a homotopy uh, four ball, which you can, that's not so hard. Um, you just yeah, uh, find a handle decomposition, which which I'll do here. Okay, so now I want to show that the complement of the disk, by the way, D is a co-core of this two handle. And so the complement of it is, is simply X. So B minus a neighborhood of D is equal to X. And now I can build X by taking uh, the zero surgery cross I, I will attach like a neighborhood of one of my fibers. So maybe I'll glue on. Is um, it the same X as over there? It is the same X, yes. It is the same X as over there. Yeah, I'm assuming that I have this X and I want to show that my knot is, is homotopy ribbon and some homotopy four ball B. And B is defined as this thing. Okay, so I take my favorite fiber, uh, how about an inverse image of zero, cross I, and then I glue in the rest of the stuff. In fact, you know what? Here, let's do the inverse image of some open interval. Uh, yeah. Negative pi over two to pi over two. Okay, and then. I glue in the inverse image of the rest of the stuff, so pi over 2, so 3 pi over 2. 
okay, so you want to make some argument that this stuff is, if the genus of your handle body is genus G, this is going to be G two handles and a three handle. Why is that true? Well, I'm just, I can just take my three dimensional handle composition. I have G two handles and a three handle in dimension three, I thicken that up. So I have G four dimensional two handles and a three handle. And now this thing is, is a thickened handle body as well. That's a four dimensional one handle body and I flip it over. And so this piece I can fill that in with G three handles and a four handle. And uh, lo and behold, there is a decomposition of the complement of the disc with the right number of handles. So in fact, it's, this is stronger. This shows that it's handle ribbon. Yes. So that was, that was an abbreviated argument. Um, I'd be happy to talk about it more later, too. All right. So uh, in the reverse direction, or the forward direction, forward direction is really strange because you can start off in one homotopy four ball and the theorem produces another potentially different homotopy four ball in which the knot is homotopy ribbon. So that's not well understood at all. Okay. Good. So here's a question that comes out of this. This is a lovely characterization for fibered knots. But in this conference, we're concerned about things that have more complicated circle value Morse functions. So what happens? What about non fiber knots? Is there any appropriate analog to Cass and Gordon's theorem in the general case? And uh, uh, this is what we came up with. I mean, the answer is yes. The condition is a little more technical, but it, it has to be. Okay, so the theorem that Maggie Miller and I proved is that um, K in S3 is handle ribbon in some homotopy for ball B if and only if there exists a circle valued Morse function P taking the exterior, S3 minus K to S1. And uh, let's say it extends over handle bodies. So we make the theorem statement nice and then push all of the technicalities into the definition of what that means. Okay? But it's, you know, it's just like the same theorem. A little bit of a wrinkle. Okay. What does this mean? This means that there exists, well, so I won't write this again, but just like before, my regular fibers are ciphered surfaces, possibly with varying genus, and so I can cap them off with disks. And so I can get this P hat, which goes from the zero surgery. It's not a fibration, it's another circle valued Morse function. Okay, so there exists a compact four manifold X with the appropriate boundary. And a circle valued Morse function, capital P, taking X to the circle, such that, so the following properties. So regular fibers are handle bodies. No, I won't write it. This is for regular values theta. We want it to extend, which it does. So P restricted to the boundary of X is equal to little p hat. And I need to say something about the critical points. The critical points of this Morse, circle valued Morse function they, they make things more complicated. Okay, so um, let's see. P, let's say P has N index one boundary critical points of T 
type 2. This is in the sense of Borogic, Nemedi, and Ranitsky. I'm, I'm not going to define it, but I'll draw you a picture momentarily, okay? Then index 2, boundary critical points of type 2. And by the way, these are just the critical points of my three-dimensional circle value Morse function. I start with some genus. I increase the genus by adding some handles. I go back to where I started by adding some other handles and the numbers that should be the same here. Yes, the, the type two is telling you kind of how these extend into X. So they can extend in one of two ways. This is saying they extend in the way that we want them to extend. And now in order to make sure that X has the right Euler characteristic, really, we have to balance out these critical points with some interior critical points. So and and interior critical points of index 2. And so that's it. There's one extra condition. And so these, these are honest four-dimensional critical points that correspond to four-dimensional two handles. OK. And there's, there's the theorem. Are all your critical points of different heights? Um, uh, sure. Uh, well, they don't have to be. No, I don't think they have to be. I mean, of course, if they're if they're not, then you can bump it a little bit, and they will be. But they don't necessarily. We don't have any restriction on where they happen. So and you so I'm the interior critical points in the handle bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Ne necessarily, they must be in the handle bodies because the the on the boundary of the handle bodies, that's your circle valued Morse function on. <laughs> The zero surgery. This is what's happening to the boundary of the handle bodies. And so yeah, all of the all of the two handles will be happening in interior of the handle bodies. So I'm, I'm going to show you a picture of you know, like the nicest possible case here. And I think I have time. Brief detour into generic maps. So I can draw the pictures that I want to draw. So instead of mapping to a one manifold, I will map to a two manifold. So instead of defining it, I'm going to draw you some, some pictures. So a generic map, so G, let's do this. G taking a four manifold X to a surface is generic if Locally, it, this is not a rigorous definition, but hopefully it'll communicate what I want it to. Locally, it looks like, like a, like a one-parameter family, family of Morse functions. So locally, it looks like uh, I have y cross i. So a three-manifold cross i mapping to i cross i via the map that g of little y t is equal to h sub t of y t, where this is some, it's a, fam it's a one parameter family of Morse functions that vary over time. If you don't like this, let's draw the picture. So possibilities, uh, five pictures. So what I'm going to draw is the singular set in this unit square i cross i. Okay, so here, first possibility is the nicest one. My singular set is empty. It is an honest to goodness submersion, and above each point is just some surface. So locally, this map looks like surface cross D2 mapping to D2. That's the best case scenario, but of course, we might have singularities. So I could have a single fold line, what you want to imagine here is that this is my, these are my y slices. So y in this case is the inverse image of that vertical arc, like a compression body. I have some surface and I add a single three-dimensional two handle, and then I just take that Morse function across i. So in that case, the t is fixed, 
And we draw an arrow on these to indicate the direction of compression. And just as like an example, the, the lift of that point could be like a genus 2 surface, and now the lift of this point on the other side is a genus 1 surface, for instance. Okay? So it locally looks like attach a two handle to this surface, cross I. I could have a picture where I have two of these things and they cross paths. So this would be like, let's say here I have a genus three surface and these two folds correspond to compressions along, I don't know, let's say that curve here and this curve there. So on the other end, after I compress twice, I get a torus. This fold is compressing along the far left curve. Here I've compressed along the far right curve. It's just saying my one parameter family of Morse functions exchanges the order. I do this one, then that one, or I can do this one, then that one. It doesn't really matter. So that's, that's what the local picture looks like here. I have a cusp. So what cusp looks like is I have a surface here, and over there I have, a, this is my direction of compression, but I'm adding a canceling curve of one and two handles as I transition. So there's nothing interesting happening in this Morse function. Here I add a canceling pair of one and two handles. So for instance, going below might correspond to this compression, but going up corresponds to that compression, where the vanishing cycles intersect once. And lastly, these are all called definite folds. because they correspond to one or two dimensional three handles. If I pass through them in either direction, I also have, oh no, indefinite, indefinite. Sorry. I could also have a line of definite folds. So this is the direction of filling. So, so what a definite fold is, is like a three handle. So I go from a sphere component to the empty set. And now you're like, oh, well, why can't the green ones cross the red ones? And can I have canceling zero one pairs? In general, you could, but, but I want all my fibers to be connected. And so for the purposes of what I will say next, this is all that can happen. Is a complete set of local pictures? This is a complete set of local pictures, yes. yes. I imagine globally there's some combination of all these. Globally, there's a combination of all of these. And also important is that there's no fixed time direction. So I take the pictures and I rotate them and put them together. That's that's the difference between a generic map and like a surf theoretic one parameter family of Morse functions, which, which also has pictures like this, but there's a global time direction. There are no handle slides kept track of in this picture. That's right. Yes. So when I have two fold lines that are running in tandem, depending on which one's on top, I can slide one of those handles, yeah, the handle on top over the lower handle, and the picture doesn't see it at all. That's right. Yes. Uh, how does it look? Does it look uh, as it? Yes. How can we uh, figure? Mm -hmm. can, can I see? I don't know how to draw a better picture than this. Yeah, yeah. Well, so here, here, there's a the trivial projection, trivial projection, trivial pro projection. Yeah, this is a cusp point. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so does it look? What is the pre-image? Oh, what is the pre-image of the cusp oh, point? Yeah. The pre of the cusp point? <laughs> Fantastic. Sorry, I misunderstood your question. So if I take the pre-image of that, that would be, uh, well. Crush along both uh, circles. So the pre-image of any of the, the singular points is going to be something that is not embedded. Um, I mean, I could draw a circle in here as well. And when you pass over this, just like when you're adding a three-dimensional handle, you take that and you crush it to a point. So yeah, this, these will be singular things, and this will have 
those two things that are crushed together. Yes. Yep. All right. So two pictures here. Let me draw first the Cass and Gordon picture. Uh, yeah, I'll draw the picture first and then explain it second. Okay. So this is a picture. Well, here. What am I doing? I would like to construct a generic map G going from that four manifold X to the annulus. And I'll write this down, but the, the vibration is going to be just take this and project onto the S1 factor. Okay. Let's go down here. So this is my this is meant to represent my vibration of the zero surgery. It's the map to the circle. And now I extend it outward. So that's one boundary component of the annulus. The second boundary component is a big circle of definite folds. So that's a, a circle of three handles. And now in between here, what I see is a bunch of folds where I'm Compressing outward like so, and I go all the way around and come back to where I started. That's a very, you know, there's not a lot of complicated detail in this picture. To be careful though, because when I glue it back up, it's not necessarily the identity. Like the handles might move around, as Ian said, they could slide over each other. And so this is going to be some sort of like immersed braid. All right, but but I can you know see all the fundamental details here. This is a capped off ciphered surface. If I lift that point, and now if I lift this arc, well I start with my ciphered surface. I compress, I compress, I compress, and then I add a three handle. This arc lifts to a handle body, and I sweep all the way around, and there's my vibration by handle bodies in this picture. So the interesting thing to try to draw is what is the picture that corresponds to my theorem with Maggie? So same thing, I'm going to construct this generic map. And in the center, I have the circle valued Morse function on the zero surgery. And so maybe I'll mark here that I do have critical points. Right? And I have some critical points here. And to make this picture nice, I will imagine that I've made this self-indexing. So I add all my one handles, and then I add all my two handles. Again, just to make the picture nice. OK, so now I need to extend this to the cannulus. And I've got my big definite circle again. This one, oh, that's, that's good enough. OK, so now I take these, and I these will flow this way with their compressions. So there are, as I extend into the annulus, there are two choices. I can flow to the left or I can flow to the right. Sometimes this, this is called like a right or a left half handle. This, this direction is what is indicated by type two boundary critical points. They have to flow in the direction as shown here. So if I take some perpendicular segments, they, they correspond to two handles and not one handles if I were to flow in the opposite direction. OK, so now I have some other fold lines there, just as in the Cass and Gordon picture. And now everything comes around here, like so. And then there's some braiding that happens there. There's some braiding that happens here. And finally, when these things meet up, what has to happen? Uh, I mentioned that there are some interior critical points, and those haven't happened yet. But there should be precisely n of them. And so those correspond to cusps that happen right here. And then everything else is a fold. And so that is the nicest picture of a generic map. And it, in fact, in our paper, we show that um, th this is enough. So it's also true that every handle ribbon knot uh, is characterized by having 
a self-indexing Morse function with an extension that has a very nice graphic like this. So maybe if you like commutative diagrams, I'll try to tie this all together. So in both of these cases, the way that the maps defined in the statements of the theorems work is that I have uh, what I have a four manifold X. I need to leave some room on the top. Which maps via G this generic map to S1 cross I, and now that maps to S1 via the projection onto the first coordinate. Okay, and that composition is precisely the capital P map that came up in those theorems. That's the circle value Morse function from X to S1. I also have, um, I was gonna, yeah, there's room. This is fine. Zero surgery maps into X via inclusion, and then it maps via little p hat to S1 cross zero, this purple boundary component of the annulus, which also includes, and then if I include and project, that's, that's just the identity. And so this is how all of these maps fit together. Okay, I have five minutes, oh, four minutes to prove it. Before I do that, are there questions? They're actually the same version. This is potentially a different um, one three four ball, or are you doing this all? In oh, the great question. So in our theorem, it is the same homotopy four ball throughout. So we could make ours a theorem about B4. Uh, the Cass and Gordon, it doesn't work because they're using some group theoretic position, you know, hitting it with a big hammer, and the hammer only gives them some of possibly different homotopy for ball. Everything that we do, you know, passes through handle decompositions because we're starting with input as some handle, handle ribbon knot, and so it's the same homotopy for ball. That's the uh, outer green space. That is the, the definite fold. So that's just the, it's the edge of the world. Okay. You just have out here, so maybe, yeah, let me draw whoops, this same picture over there. So P inverse of theta is a handle body. As I pass through these folds, I start with my closed surface and add two handles. And passing through the green surface corresponds to capping off with a three handle. Yeah. Yep. And I guess, you know, what else I should note? Depending on where I start, of course, my surfaces are changing genus, and so my handle bodies are changing genus as well. We have some thin handle body there. We have some thick handle body there. Okay. I won't try to sketch the proof. Let me finish with some questions, though. Some very, very like, general questions. Um, yeah. So this is this is a remark. Really, so cannot replace the existence of a circle valued Morse function with a this is true for every circle valued Morse function, which is upsetting because Cass and Gordon, as, as was mentioned in Luis's talk, right, this is the vibration is unique, and so uh, this is like the vibration, it's, it's homotopy driven if and only if the vibration extends. Here, it's, there exists a circle valued Morse function. Um, and the reason we know that we cannot replace it with for all is there are some examples due to Cochran and Davis where they found a counterexample to the Kaufman conjecture to show it's not always possible. They find an example of a genus one knot with no slice derivative. You have to look at a genus two surface. So, so weird stuff can happen. Um, and I guess there's a question. You know, the question is like, why not? I mean, we know, we know that it can't happen, but maybe can we, can we characterize better which circular Morse functions extend? And then, you know, maybe a general question. Uh, the, the, the biggest or the most difficult part in the proof of this theorem was proving the intermediate statement, which says a knot is handle ribbon, if and only if it admits an R-link derivative. And the proof of that fact goes through some um, some synthesis of like three-dimensional cut and paste stuff, incompressible surfaces intersecting things, 
with some more four-dimensional arguments. And I just, you know, I feel that there is quite a bit of interaction that hasn't happened yet between those two things that can still happen. So how how to make 3D cut and paste techniques play with four-dimensional questions. Um, there's another partial result I have with Jeff Meyer, which uses some machinery from circular Haggard splittings to say something about four-dimensional handle decompositions. And uh, I just feel like there's more there. So that's a bad question. But anyway, I'll stop. Thank you very much. Other questions? Can, can you take one from on Zoom? Uh, definitely. <laughs> Hi, it's Danny. Um, uh, so, is the um, it, so the Cass and Gordon result is uh, actually pretty effective, as you noted, at uh, obstructing ribbonness for for you know for for uh, for fiber knots. So, can you yeah. can you use this? I mean, could you you know are there some knots we now know are not ribbon because of this? That is a great question, Danny. And well, if I had more room on this board, I would have written my third question, which is, can we use these techniques to obstruct this for new examples? Uh, and so the answer is, I don't know. Um, it, it plays to this question. like, So what, what we would need to do is understand the collection of all circular Morse functions, which seems daunting, but you know maybe we can do that. Right? We understand the collection of all Haggard splittings of the three sphere. Certainly, there are knots for which we could prove that like all circular Morse functions are reasonably nice. Then we would need a way to obstruct this, and so you can. There's there's a map which I call the pseudo monodromy map, where you take you take your surface here, you throw in the compressions there, you throw in the compressions here, and then you look at collections of curves and how they how they have, you know, how they evolve this way and how they evolve this way, and as the corresponding Hagar diagram, you get the right manifold. Um, so it's not unreasonable to think that maybe those you could find a, a more complicated way to say this can't happen for any collection of curves. But but I think it's a great question, and I, I don't know the answer. Do you have any candidates of knots that are? Slice, but maybe not handle body ribbon. I, I wish I did. Um, my favorite examples, the ones that I play with all the time, are examples that appear in a paper of Tom Charlin and Thompson, potential counterexamples to the generalized property R conjecture. All of those links are handle ribbon. And so if you band them together, you get handle ribbon knots. So any anything that would be done there would be finding some distinction between handle ribbon and ribbon would be that containment. And so those are those are my favorite possible counterexamples to slice ribbon, but they they don't really. We we understand they're how they're, ribbon. they're all handle ribbon. Yep, and we understand the extensions completely. Yeah. In your diagram here, can you push the cusps over to the boundary? Ah. And see that you're sort of when you attach these one handles, they immediately get canceled. But well, so that would be great. Uh, a priori, no. Because if I saw this sort of picture, so Ian says, what happens if I see this? So a cusp, but I don't have to braid at all. Well, I can, I can just eliminate that. That's telling me that my boundary circular more circle value Morse function has been stabilized, and so I can destabilize that and and proceed. So if I see any cusps but don't braid, then I get rid of them. And the, the answer, I mean, why I said a priori no is that if I could do that, then I could make my non fiber not fiber by getting rid of all my boundary critical points. So I wouldn't expect to do that. One, one thing would be really cool would be to try to modify this picture in some way to change k to a not k prime with fewer critical points. I have no idea how to do that, but that, that might be one way that someone could try to show that you can pass from this homotopy four ball to one that comes from the Cass and Gordon construction. Yeah, I guess I meant just can you push them one way or the other? Maybe not. Oh, uh, oh. So you just have. <clears throat> can you push them? Oh, I see. Past yeah, the braiding. Yeah. Oh. So you can see the little cusps near the, near the boundary there. 
I see. So so take this cusp and make it like right here. Yeah. That is a good question. I don't know. I would I would expect the answer to be no in general, but maybe in some special cases. Yeah. So that wouldn't be strong enough to do this, right? Yeah. yeah. I misunderstood your question. Yeah. Um, I don't know. In these Cochrane Davis examples, does the is the circular value morse function on the knot? Do you know how many? Does that have like the minimum number of critical points? That I mean, when they show it's not always possible. Like you're getting two different circle value morse functions on the knot. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Is, so are they minimal in some way, or do you? So their their examples have genus one ciphered surfaces. So and if oh, you try to construct one, that would be this would be like genus one. Yeah. That I mean the the thing is that when you take this picture and lift this handle body, uh, the corresponding cut system, which lives in the boundary, that is your derivative that you like, your derivative length. Mm -hmm. So they show that can happen with genus one, but they are, they're ribbon with respect to like a deep genus two ciphered surface. So you have, you have a ribbon disk with two ribbon intersections, and so you can construct a genus two ciphered surface. And once you can do that, you can find an example with uh, genus two here. I don't know what the thick genus is. But so for those examples there, the, you can do a, Circle valued Morse function with thin genus two and, and possibly thick genus three over which it extends, uh -huh. but not thin genus one is the point. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Alex. Thanks.